Hello, today on Arts24, we have the multi-award winning American author, Colson Whitehead. He's won the Pulitzer Prize twice, first for his novel, The Underground Railroad, loved by Barack Obama and Oprah Winfrey, made into a TV series by Oscar winning director, Barry Jenkins. He was honored again for Nickel Boys in 2020, adapted into a film due out in the autumn. Colson Whitehead, hello. How are you doing? It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Now you're here for the Festival America which takes place every two years in Paris, celebrating American literature. Now, former guest of honour, Toni Morrison, once said, in this country, American means white. Everybody else has to hyphenate. She said that some 30 years ago. In 2024, what does American mean? Um, well, I think it's, you know, it's fine to be a hyphenate. You know, I think we're all, have a lot of different identities. I'm, uh, I'm a writer, a black writer, American writer, a writer who takes a lot of naps. A writer who sometimes doesn't write at all and just stares off into space. And so um, I think America is big enough to accommodate um, all our different identities, um, for good or ill. Well, you were on the cover of Time magazine after your first Pulitzer Prize, the first author in nearly a decade, on the cover since Jonathan Franzen. You're one of today's great American authors. You've written nine books of fiction and two books of nonfiction, as well as books about race and history. You've written satire, as in Apex Hides the Hurt, zombie horror in Zone One, and a nonfiction book on poker, which is called The Noble Hustle. You are loved by readers here in France. And the manager of popular Paris bookstore, Le Martin Stanislas Rigo, talked to us about your writing. I think that Colson is one of the last giants of American literature in the classical sense of the term. I'm not sure he would approve of me saying this, but in my opinion, he is the continuation of writers like Steinbeck. There's something very powerful. His writing style is deeply human, especially his ability to empathize with his characters. To be clear, I don't mean naive, but rather he has an understanding of human nature that is quite surprising. What's your reaction to those words? He's right. I, I don't approve of him saying that. <laughs> He's very kind. Um, I think the last time I was here was with, was with my book, Sag Harbor, maybe 14 years ago. And I've had many ups and downs in my career. So um, to know that I have this readership in France and different places, I feel very grateful uh, that people are coming along for the ride. Well, the book and The Underground Railroad is an allegory about race in America told through the stories of an escaped slave and slave catcher. The Nickel Boys um, is based on the true story of a brutal reform school in Florida. Um, after writing about those grim subjects, why did you start writing crime novels set in Harlem? Uh, well, you know, like everyone, I have different interests. And so I like <laughs> horror movies when I, was, when I was a kid. So I wrote a zombie story. I played poker, so I wrote about poker. Um, and the fun thing about my job is that if I keep writing, I get to address these different interests. So I like Ocean's Eleven. One day I was thinking, you know, they must have had so much fun um, yeah. in that movie, coming <laughs> up with the capers. It, it's funny. Uh, there's suspense. Could I do that? And so I gave myself permission. And after writing two, you know, serious books, it's nice to have a, a place where I can do some jokes and have a much lighter kind of tone. Well, um the books are set in Harlem and for the 50th anniversary of Hip Hop last year, our team actually went to Harlem and we roamed around the local um, area with the legendary fashion designer Dapper Dan. Now he specialised in counterfeit clothes, as I'm sure you know, in the 70s. I mean, he was part of the Harlem world you write about actually, and he now works with Gucci. He talked to us about the significance of Harlem. Take a listen. Harlem triggers cultural among people of color everywhere. If Harlem was a cultural pot where we all interacted together, poor Italians, poor Irish, poor African Americans, poor Puerto Ricans. So it was like a fusion, what I call a gumbo of culture. And that's what defined it. Some images of Harlem back in the day. Now your new novel, Crook Manifesto, it's set in Harlem. It's coming out in French, it's the second volume in the trilogy you began with Harlem Shuffle. Uh, at the heart of both books is Ray Carney. He is a furniture salesman, a family man, and a sometimes uh, criminal. You could have set this second novel at any point in New York history. Why did you pick the 70s? Well, yeah, I'm following uh, Ray Carney um, in his 30s, in his 40s, in his 50s. 
um, and, and New York City in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It's a big canvas. It allows me to track the ups and downs of, of Ray Carney's life and also the city. Um, there's a sense of optimism in New York in the 60s. In the 70s, there's a fiscal crisis. Crime is at an all-time high. And then in the 80s, we come back to a uh, you know, robust economy. Um, there's a lot of development. But at the end of the 80s, there's uh, the, the height of the AIDS crisis and um, the crack epidemic. And so by following him over this big amount of time, I get to really um, get into the progress of one man's life and also the city. And New York is really crumbling in the 70s and the city was bankrupt, crime was at an all-time high. But it was actually a very important moment for culture, wasn't it? Oh, certainly. I mean, um, uh, everyone's very desperate in the mid-70s and I was a little child and I think I internalized a lot of this tension. Um, but it's also the birth of, of hip-hop, of punk, disco. Um, so out of this uh, terrible situation, artists are working. And when I was writing and, and trying to revitalize uh, their, uh, their medium and, um, and try to stay alive. And I think when I was writing Crook Manifesto, it was during the pandemic and the cities were deserted. Um, there was this air of desperation. And I feel that I kept myself sane by working. And so that's what artists do. No matter what's going on, we, you know, we try to uh, get the work done and make sense of what's happening. And in both of these books, um, you, do, you delight in the crime genre, and we can feel it in the writing. Um, they're dark comedies as well. They're also social novels. How do you balance the serious subjects, which is the crime, which was going on at the time, um, with all the humour? Uh, well, I think, you know, in our lives, we have both these things. You know, we have uh, the joy of being alive and also the, the tragedy. Uh, we're veering from absurdity uh, to beauty from minute to minute, block to block as we, we walk through the city. And so um, part of what I tr try to do is capture that, both those extremes um, that we're living in in every instant. And like um, Harlem Shuffle, Crook Manifesto, it's divided into three novellas. Uh, the second section takes place on the set of a black exploitation movie. Now, I know in your 20s you're actually a film critic. Yeah, um, and, and, and when I grew up uh, as a consumer of, of pop culture in the 70s, I love black exploitation movies. They were um, low budget exploitation movies um, about crime, horror, uh, detective stories, pimps. Um, and there weren't a lot of, uh, of black characters in, in the film at that time. And so I gravitated towards, uh, uh, towards that genre. So going back to it now has been fun. Um, I'm writing a crime story. And in that crime story, there's a, a film being made about a crime story. So it's sort of like, <laughs> Uh, a bunch of, of, of uh, nesting dolls. It's very, very fun. And is there anything you can share with us about the, the final volume of the trilogy? It is set in the 80s. I was wondering, are we going to see Donald Trump in it? Um, well, I think that's... You know, I don't want to poison my, my book with him. Uh, <laughs> but his, um, uh, his sort of greed and corruption is in keeping with what's happening in New York in the 80s. Um, a trilogy is hard. I grew up, in this, I grew up uh, as a Gen Xer, and so... My platonic trilogy is, you know, Star Wars, Empire, and then Return of the Jedi. You don't want to go, like, down with Return. You want to go, like, Star Wars, Empire, Empire. So wrapping it up and trying not to do a crappy trilogy, uh, trying to end on a high note uh, is very difficult, but that's, that's the fun of it, the challenge. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, obviously, we're coming up to the presidential elections. Uh, it is a very divisive time in America. Have you got any predictions? Well, you know, I was here in 2008 for the Festival of America, and people kept asking me, um, is America ready for a, a black man, a black man to be president? And I didn't know, but I certainly I was hopeful. Um, the stakes are higher now because it's uh, either one person or fascism. Fascism, not good. We don't want to do that. So hopefully people will come to their senses and, and make a good choice. Just going back to the cultural element for a moment, and will you be watching the movie that's coming out about Donald Trump, The Apprentice? It's coming out um, just before the elections. It's going to get a great review, so yeah, I'm definitely down to see it. <laughs> okay. And um, well, The Underground and Railroad was made into a series. The film uh, Nickel Boys is due out in the autumn. How involved are you in these adaptations? In, in both cases, I was working on my books, so I didn't want to stop and, and participate. Um, and with Underground, it turned out you know so incredibly. Uh, wonderful that I, I feel very honored uh, that these this 
great crew, this heist crew, uh, kind of came together and pulled off this great job. I haven't seen the finished version of the, of the Nickel Boys, and so next month I'm excited to see how it's turned out. But um, I'm still I'm still on the high of of Barry Jenkins' adaptation. Um, it was really such a, a lovely experience to see. Okay, Colson Whitehead, um, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Um, Colson Whitehead's Crook Manifesto is out in French and he'll be at Paris's Festival America this week. We're going to leave you with a clip from the film adaptation of Nickel Boys, which is out in October. Thanks for watching. See you next time. What are you going to do? He's now a lover. Hello.